Warning, the stunts in this video were performed by professionals and people with a screw loose. So, for your safety and the protection of those around you, do not attempt any of the stunts you are about to see. I am being serious, do not be stupid, do not copy anything you see in this video. Wrestling is something that a lot of us enjoyed in our childhood. You know, the, how epic the fights were, how cool all the wrestling characters were, suplexing your friend through a table in school and getting suspended, you know, the usual stuff. But there wasn't just mainstream wrestling. There was another kind. A kind that you really would not let your kids watch. A kind where the wrestlers were really out to hurt each other. A kind where the wrestlers used actual weapons on each other and not in a scripted way. They, they were really using them. And it got bloody. But out of these types of wrestlers, one stood out. One of them was so insane, so outrageous and so mad that his opponents thought that he was actually trying to kill them. And he might have been. New Jack. Please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. <coughs> but before we get into the mad lad, this video was brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an easy to use learning community with hundreds of different classes to discover, to master and improve your skills. Whether you are a beginner, intermediate or expert, there is always something new for you to learn. Skillshare can help you make the most of 2022, a year for learning, growth and connection through communal creative outlets. Who doesn't want to learn more and improve themselves? If that's you, then Skillshare will help with that goal. I obviously have a big interest in movies and filming and since it's something that I do quite often, I'm always hoping to improve. So I took the class Cinematography Basics Introduction to Lighting Techniques by Zach Mulligan, which has 12 lessons teaching you how to use direction in lighting scenes. One thing that I like about Skillshare is that the classes are as long or as short as you want them to be and they are very easy to follow. So, the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description down below or to sign up with the code COUNTDANKULA will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Jerome Young was born on the 3rd of January 1963 in Greensboro, North Carolina and he was the youngest of his siblings, three brothers and a sister. He grew up in an extremely rough environment at home since Jerome's father was an alcoholic and his parents would fight every single day and night which would very often involve them physically abusing each other. His two oldest brothers later left home to serve in the military so they were never actually around while Jerome grew up, though for them it was probably for the best. In Jerome's early years, during a fight between his parents, his father actually stabbed his mother five times in front of the entire family just as she returned home from work. Jerome's father had learned that she was cheating on him with multiple men. She barely managed to escape the attack, but she managed to call into the hospital to deal with her wounds. Because of this event, Jerome's father was arrested and taken to jail and Jerome believed that since this was in the 60s, no one really needed to press charges. The police didn't actually care about any of that and they would just arrest him and sentence him anyway. However, he was released after a single night in jail. A single night in jail for attempting to murder his own wife. 
Jerome's mother eventually snapped because of the abuse, and she tried to leave his father, taking Jerome with her. But after she had gotten Jerome into the car, his father came out armed with a pistol and shot his mother in the leg. And yet again, the cops held him in a cell for just a single night and then let him go. This kind of horrific home life would go on until Jerome was around five years old, when his father suddenly died of a heart attack. Not long after his father's death, Jerome's mother started sleeping around, and she would have a new guy in the house almost every day of the week. Jerome remembers that he and his siblings would hear her having sex at all hours of the day and night, not really caring if the kids were around. Jerome wanted out of the house, as his mother had also started to become extremely physically abusive towards him. Not long after leaving high school at the age of 18, Jerome was given a two-year prison sentence for armed robbery and aggravated assault. He and his friends would go out and mug people every weekend, and in his own words, he said that it was like sport for them. The reason that they were all eventually caught was because the license plate of the car they were using was caught on a CCTV camera quite close to where the crime occurred. Jerome said that prison was a learning experience for him, not only because he took his first year of college education behind bars, but because it toughened him up. And after leaving prison, he had to continue college as one of his parole conditions, but as soon as his parole was over, he immediately dropped out. Jerome then started a short career as a truck driver, but shortly after this, a friend of his told him about a job that was going as a bounty hunter. Jerome wasn't exactly looking for a thrill or for excitement, he just wanted the job because the money was good. This job, however, got him in a lot of confrontations, as you would expect. At one point, a bounty that Jerome was hunting drove their truck into his car, and at that moment, Jerome just snapped. He dragged the guy out of the truck and beat the absolute shit out of him. Jerome was also playing semi-professional football as a hobby, and he was then approached by another friend of his saying that he had been taking wrestling classes and that Jerome should come along with him. Jerome, however, wasn't really interested in wrestling. But... He went along to the lessons anyway, because, once again, the big motivator, as always, for Jerome is that he heard there was money to be made. But when he started wrestling, he found out that he was actually very good at it. Jerome was then encouraged by the professional wrestler Ray Candy, who said that Jerome had what it takes to be a wrestler, and he encouraged him down that path. Jerome went ahead with the training to wrestle, despite not really being interested in wrestling. And like any other wrestler going into the ring, Jerome needed a stage name. Taking inspiration from the movie New Jack City, Jerome would now be known as New Jack. In the next year, New Jack would confirm that he had a natural talent for wrestling by winning the United States Wrestling Association Tag Team Championship with a fellow wrestler named Homeboy. Because of the victory at this tournament, New Jack gained interest from some of the big boys in wrestling, and he was contacted by Jim Cornette of the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Association. Jim wasn't only interested in New Jack's skill, however, he had actually been wanting a black tag team for his act. New Jack chose Jamal Mustafa, whose stage name was Mustafa Saeed, to be his tag partner. Jim Cornette wanted to see how the two guys fought together, so he sent them for a tryout in Atlanta. New Jack and Mustafa tag-teamed under the name The Gangsters, and the tryouts were a big success. Jim liked what he saw, and after the match, he approached them both and says that he wanted the gangsters to play the bad guys, and he also wanted them 
to play as racists. New Jack thought that beating up white people in the Smoky Mountains was going to be racist enough, but Jim wanted more. I want more racism on my desk by 5pm. Get me pictures of racism. He t- <laughs> so stupid. He didn't want them to just simply be racist to white people. He wanted them to be racist to everyone. Even black people. So, during the big entrance in their first ever match, New Jack was pushed to say something to make the audience understand that he and Mustafa's tag team were the bad guys. So, New Jack said, and I quote, I want to give a shout out to my homeboy, OJ Simpson. Keep up the good work, too less to worry about. <laughs> This, this worked uh, a little too well because New Jack and his partner were then rushed out of the building because the audience were going to kill them. This was at a time when the US was still extremely sensitive about topics surrounding the OJ Simpson trial and the Rodney King incident. But New Jack enjoyed pushing buttons and he got a kick out of it. I know that feeling. In another entrance, uh, he and his tag team partner brought out a white baby doll, tied a noose around its neck, and then hung it up while Mustafa hit it with a baseball bat. And yet again, the audience went fucking mental. This resulted in a lot of audience members in New Jack's early career calling him the Gamer Word. At one point after a match, a young white kid came up to New Jack and rubbed his arm. New Jack thought at first that the kid was trying to get his attention and wanted to shake his hand. But when the kid didn't shake his hand, New Jack asked him, Why did you do that? And the kid responded with, My daddy told me that if you rub a black person's skin, then you will become black. (laughs) New Jack got very annoyed (laughs) at hearing this and snapped at the kid, causing the kid to run away in fear. New Jack would very often get people calling him the gamer word and then running away before he could catch them because he really is not someone that you want to fuck with. But despite all of this, he continued with his racist character and he would even do things like calling all the white people in the crowd devils. But it wasn't just white people that were pissed off at New Jack, since his character was racist to both white people and black people, the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, better known as the NAACP, were not too happy with him either, and they started to protest his shows after he called them homegrown monkeys. Despite despite the fact that he had everyone pissed off and had everyone hating him, this only made him more well-known within the wrestling community. And some people even liked the nihilistic, violent attitude of his stage character. A lot more people were starting to hear of New Jack. New Jack and Mustafa eventually got a call to join Extreme Championship Wrestling, better known as ECW, which would mean they had to leave Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Jim Carnett was not too happy about this and he and New Jack ended up falling out. But since his contract was almost up with Smoky Mountain anyway and also the ECW were going to pay him a lot more money, Of course New Jack left. New Jack said that working with ECW was crazy in comparison to Smoky Mountain. Everything was bigger, the shows were bloodier, the shows were more extreme, and afterwards they would have parties with the fans. New Jack said that the parties were so out of control that there was more blood at the party than in the ring. While under suspension from wrestling because of what was only described as a locker room incident, New Jack was fitting new carpets in his home. 
And while he was stapling the carpet down, he had a light bulb moment. And he thought to himself, this staple gun <laughs> would be perfect for wrestling. So, as soon as he returned to wrestling, he brought the staple gun with him. As most of us will know, a lot of wrestling is scripted. And for the most part, a lot of care goes into making sure that the wrestlers don't actually get too badly hurt. ECW was very, very different from regular wrestling, but they still had their limits. So, in the case of New Jack, with his new toy, he would go into the ring and make it look like he was stapling his opponent's forehead when he would actually be stapling the back of his own hand. Then, when his opponent fell down, they would pull out a razor that they had hidden somewhere on themselves and make a small cut at the location so that the wound looked a lot worse than it actually was. Delivering injuries to the forehead was a very common thing for wrestlers in this type of wrestling to do at the time. They would ram things like nails, scalpels, broken light bulbs, you name it, into each other's forehead as part of the show, which is why New Jack's forehead looks like a Klingon's ball bag. The staple gun was actually very well received by the audience, so New Jack started doing even more brutal things in the ring to make an even bigger name for himself. With all of the success of his career, New Jack was making more money than he knew what to do with, and he was going to one party after another. And one thing that is inevitable at these kinds of parties is that a lot of people were on drugs, and one night, while at a bar, New Jack was extremely drunk, and one of the other wrestler's girlfriends offered him a bump of cocaine to sober him up a little. New Jack loved it so much that he started a daily cocaine habit that got so bad, he was eventually snorting around an ounce of the stuff every weekend, which cost him around $1,200. Basically, New Jack had a $5,000 a month coke habit. New Jack really, really liked coke. Bitch, anybody that ever knew me knew I snorted coke before my match. How in the fuck you think I was going up 30 feet and diving off shit? Because it was just, I just felt like doing it? Come on, now. on November the 23rd, 1996, at the Wonderland Ballroom in Revere, Massachusetts, a wrestler known as Axel Rotten had been scheduled to work on a tag team match with Devon Dudley against the gangsters. But he couldn't make the show due to travelling issues. So, New Jack had to fight a new wrestler called Mass Transit. A man so fat that I have no idea how he transited that mass into the ring. Now, this match was actually Mass Transit's tryout, and before the show, he approached New Jack in the locker room and told him that his dad was in the audience and he wanted to make him proud. So, he asked New Jack if he could back down just a little bit so that he could get some of his moves in and show off. And I know in the movies, the guy usually goes, yeah, you, you got it, kid. You make your pa proud. New Jack, however, uh, immediately told him to fuck off. <laughs> like, New Jack was actually insulted and offended at the gall of this amateur asking him to risk his reputation. Mass Transit eventually compromised with New Jack, saying that he wanted to bleed. And since he wasn't confident enough to be able to stealthily cut his own head without anyone seeing, you know, like the other wrestlers could do, he asked New Jack to help him out and do it for him. Which, which was a very... Very stupid thing to ask of not just one of the most dangerous wrestlers ever, but one of the most dangerous wrestlers ever that you've just pissed off. New Jack happily agreed to do it. And yeah, it went exactly as you would expect. During the show, like he was asked, New Jack cut open Mass Transit's forehead with a surgical scalpel. But 
he really went for it, which caused a lot more blood to shoot out than usual. New Jack had actually uh, sliced his forehead so deeply that he severed two of his arteries. After the cutting, New Jack apparently shouted, I hope this fat fuck bleeds to death because I don't give a fuck. And then he and Mustafa proceeded to kick the absolute shit out of mass transit while he lay on the ground bleeding out. Yes, there is footage of all of this. Yes, you can find it on YouTube of all places. However, for the safety of my channel, I'm not going to show it in this video. The show ended up getting cancelled and the police and ambulance services were called. And Mass Transit had to get 50 stitches in his forehead. Later, after the show, New Jack returned home to Atlanta, thinking nothing of what he'd just done in the ring. But then, two months later, he got a knock at the door and it was the police. Mass Transit and his family were pressing charges. After the incident, anyone would have thought that New Jack was legally screwed. But the situation was actually so much worse. It turns out that Mass Transit, whose real name was Eric Kulas, had lied his way into the ring after saying that he had been trained by the famed Killer Kowalski, which turned out to be completely untrue and for some reason people just took his word on it. But that wasn't the only lie that Mass Transit told to get into the ring. For wrestling matches like this, there obviously is an age requirement to take part. And Mass Transit told the promoters that he was 21. However, it turned out that Mass Transit was only 17. So New Jack had not only brutally cut open someone's forehead with a scalpel, but he had done it to a minor. So, you think that this would mean that New Jack was royally screwed, but all of this actually worked in his favour, since mass transit had deceived everyone from the very beginning, which resulted in him being put in this situation. After the incident and arrest, New Jack was removed from the ECW and he had to beg the ECW to reinstate the barely legal pay-per-view show and to take him back. And the ECW rejected New Jack a bunch of times. But after they finally got all of the information about the incident and they understood that New Jack had been tricked and that he had no idea that Mass Transit was a minor, they took him back and allowed the show to go ahead. The family of Mass Transit still tried to sue New Jack, but after the court heard that Mass Transit had asked to be cut and had lied about his experience and had lied about his age from the very start, New Jack was off the hook and was acquitted by the jury. New Jack had dodged jail and was never successfully sued by Mass Transit's family. Not that it mattered because Mass Transit died six years later. Guess why? Life went back to normal for New Jack after the incident, but he had gained even more renown and notoriety for his savage violence in the ring, which the fans absolutely ate up. At a later show with Vic Grimes where they were asked to fall through two tables with one balanced on top of the other, New Jack said that one table was no issue, but two was a problem because the fall was a huge risk. But, as always, after enough cocaine, New Jack did it anyway. Even though they were both supposed to perform the drop, New Jack had to pull Vic down with him by force because Vic seemed to have changed his mind at the last second, but New Jack was having none of it. As they fell, Vic landed on New Jack's back and then both of them 
went through the tables. New Jack suffered a broken leg and a skull fracture at the back of his head. The skull fracture had given him brain damage, permanent insomnia and blindness in his right eye, which meant that he was in the hospital for months afterwards. This was the worst injury that New Jack had sustained in his entire wrestling career. While New Jack was healing, he was majorly pissed off at Vic Grimes. Not only because Vic had severely hurt him, but because Vic didn't even once visit New Jack in the hospital or at home to see if he was okay. After recovering as much as he could, New Jack returned to the ECW and he walked straight up to Vic and punched him in the face. Vic immediately apologised to New Jack, but that wouldn't save him later down the line. New Jack toured the indie wrestling circuit for a while, doing his usual show, which was still violent, but nothing that matched his previous antics. Until he was asked to do a rematch with Vic. With yet another batshit crazy stunt. You would think that he had learned his lesson the last time, but nope, New Jack had a score to settle with Vic. And he never said no to a challenge. This show was going to be just like the last, only bigger and a lot more dangerous. The fall was a 40 foot high drop from a scaffold. And it wasn't just two tables to land on this time, it was 12. New Jack was still mad at what Vic had done, so instead of throwing him on the tables, which would have most likely broken his fall and caused less injury, New Jack used a stun gun on him multiple times and then threw him so far that he missed the tables, only just clipping the edge and landing on the ropes. If he had fallen only slightly past the rope, Vic would have been a dead man. It almost looked like New Jack was trying to kill Vic. And when he was asked about this, New Jack flat out said, yeah, I was trying to kill him. Yeah, yeah, I was, fuck that guy. Yeah, I was trying to kill him. <laughs> Luckily for Vic, after that 40 foot drop, the only injury he sustained was a dislocated ankle and a few bumps and scratches, which is... Pretty unbelievable when you actually see the fall. That is not right. Do you actually not be using that weapon? Oh no! 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 Please no! After the match, Vic and New Jack never spoke again, which is pretty understandable since New Jack did, did try to kill him. Sometime later in April of 2003 in Tennessee, New Jack was matched against Gypsy Joe, who was a 70-year-old wrestler that had decades of wrestling experience under his belt, and he was billed as the man who could feel no pain. This would turn out to be actually a very rare moment in New Jack's career because it was one of the only ever times that he told his promoter that he didn't want to do the fight mostly due to Gypsy Joe's age. But New Jack was easily talked into it when the promoter assured him that everything would be fine and that Joe was totally okay to go ahead with the fight. The promoter then told New Jack to just go out there and have a fun time. Shortly after this, while backstage, New Jack was actually approached by Joe, who came to give him further assurance, but in his own words. He also told New Jack that he could teach him a lot and that he had his back so he didn't need to worry. New Jack, however, saw this as condescending and he lost his shit a little bit, but... He saved it for the ring. Once the match started, New Jack threw punches, kicks and headbutts. And while they all landed, none of it seemed to affect Joe. In fact, Joe just took all of the hits like they were nothing. 
even managing to get a headbutt in himself, which busted New Jack's nose. New Jack thought that Joe wasn't selling the act enough for him or the crowd. So New Jack decided to take things further. A lot further. So New Jack got legitimately angry and started whipping Gypsy Joe with a chain. And then he picked up a bat. And not just any bat, it was a bat that was wrapped with barbed wire. Which New Jack proceeded to bring down on Joe's head multiple times. The fact that Joe had insulted New Jack by being condescending wasn't the only thing that had pissed him off. It was also the fact that New Jack thought Gypsy Joe didn't belong in the ring with him. Partly because of his age, but mostly because New Jack believed he was at a much higher level than Gypsy Joe. So, he wanted to teach the guy a lesson. The Tennessee crowd, having just witnessed a 70-year-old man getting beaten to a bloody pulp with a bat covered in barbed wire, started shouting racial slurs at New Jack, which only made New Jack angrier, and he released this anger by hitting Joe even more with the bat and taunting the crowd while he did it. The crowd at this point were fucking furious. When the match was done, New Jack left the venue and never again spoke to his opponent. This only further cemented New Jack's title as the world's most violent wrestler. A year later, New Jack started to fight for the Thunder Wrestling Federation and was paired up to fight another wrestler called Hunter Red, and the match was to take place in Florida. Before the match, New Jack wanted to plan ahead for the fight, so he approached Hunter Red to discuss it with him so that they could both put on a good show. Hunter Red, however, just shrugged this off and said he will just improvise. New Jack thought that that was a bad idea since it would be much better if they were both on the same page. So New Jack asked him again. Hunter Red got annoyed and he said to New Jack, No, I'll do whatever. Big mistake. New Jack liked to bring his own props and weapons into the ring. One example being the stun gun in the earlier fight against Vic Grimes, as well as the infamous staple gun. But this time, New Jack really wanted to spice things up. New Jack really wanted to up the ante. So for this fight, New Jack turned up with... a knife. It... <laughs> it... A knife. He turned up to a wrestling match with a fucking knife. Once he was in the ring and after taking a few punches, New Jack was lifted into the air and was about to get slammed. But instead, New Jack grabbed the rope with one hand and pulled the knife out with the other. And then just started frantically stabbing the shit out of Hunter Red not caring about where he was stabbing. He was just stabbing him everywhere he could. The news reported that New Jack had actually stabbed him 16 times. But according to New Jack, uh, it was actually only nine times. Because, you know, <laughs> that, that makes it better, apparently. The audience had grown to expect brutality from New Jack, but... This time, he had crossed the line even for them. The audience was terrified, and some were screaming and crying over what they just witnessed. One of the members of the audience immediately called the police, and the cops showed up rather quickly with their weapons drawn. The police likely didn't have all the details about what had happened since the crowd member who called them was panicked. New Jack then dropped to his knees with his hands in the air, waiting for them, because he knew for a fact this time he took it too far and he was going to jail. On the way to the lockup, one of the police asked New Jack why he hated white people so much, and New Jack just found this really funny since all of his anti-white racism 
was all just an act that was part of his character. After arriving at the station, he was given two felony charges. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and aggravated assault to commit murder. And just as New Jack probably thought that this was the end for him, he was visited in jail by none other than his stabbing victim, Hunter Red. Red had actually come to make a deal with New Jack. Take me on the road and train me in the Florida wrestling circuit and I will drop all the charges. How the fuck can a guy be this lucky? New Jack told Hunter Red that he wouldn't agree to anything until he dropped the charges. So Hunter agreed and dropped them straight away. New Jack was taken to court where he had his charges dismissed and he was once again a free man. Now, you have to wonder, since Hunter Red had done New Jack such a massive solid, did he go and train Hunter like he had asked? Fuck no, no he didn't at all. <laughs> nope. No, uh, essentially, uh, never spoke to him again, just completely ignored him. New Jack just went straight home, because uh, New Jack wanted to get out of Florida as fast as he could. Despite the huge shit show that had just gone down, New Jack went back into the indie wrestling circuit with a lot more notoriety than ever and no one stood in his way until he was due to fight at a reunion gig. New Jack was described as a dangerous sadistic maniac and some people said that he shouldn't be allowed to fight at all because he had no sportsmanship and once he got into the ring, he would genuinely attack people. We all know that while wrestling is still very dangerous and has caused deaths and severe injuries, it's mostly controlled and scripted so that wrestlers can at least come out alive and without life-altering physical trauma. You know, a good middle ground between safety and entertainment. New Jack, however, did, did not give a fuck about any of that. On the 13th of September 2006 at Alhambra Arena in Philadelphia, New Jack got himself into trouble again. Because while he was waiting to go into the ring for the seventh match, so he hadn't even gotten into the ring yet, he decided to order a Sprite from the concession stand. However, when his order arrived, instead of being given a Sprite, he was given a 7-Up. Now, most people would probably just think of this as the teeniest, tiniest amount of misfortune. No big deal, and go on with their day. However, this is New Jack. So New Jack started to threaten the lone female worker of the concession stand, which of course made her shit her pants. What New Jack didn't know is that this particular staff member that he was currently yelling at was actually the daughter of the venue operator Roger Artigiani. And since she was fairly well known amongst the staff, a male colleague stepped in to defend her, which was pretty brave considering he was putting himself between New Jack and his target. This, however, clearly was not the smartest of moves since New Jack just immediately punched the guy right in the face. New Jack's confrontation with all of these staff members drew the attention of Ronnie Lang, who was the head of security and also the promoter of that night's show. Lang and New Jack got into a heated argument which caused a fight to break out between them and they both had to be separated. The police were then called out to the incident, but before they arrived, New Jack had locked himself in a room and was refusing to come out. So, around 20 to 30 police officers showed up, pulled New Jack out of the room and escorted him out of the arena. He would not be fighting that night. That, however, was not the end of the incident, though because New Jack waited outside to confront the worker he punched as they left the building. Though, fortunately for the staff member, they weren't punched again, they just got yelled at. And, despite being assaulted in the arena and verbally abused, the worker 
did not press charges against New Jack. So this was yet another time that New Jack had dodged going to jail. He did, however, receive a lifetime ban from the venue. In 2008, New Jack did an interview where he discussed the double murder and suicide committed by Chris Benoit. New Jack said that nothing could excuse what Benoit had done and anybody that defended him from public scrutiny were hypocrites. Oh, you look at him. If the bitch mouth is that big and you can't take it, then bitch, go and get the fuck on. If you got to smack the bitch upside the head, smack the bitch upside the head and go and get the fuck on. But it took a motherfucking straight, 100% uncut fucking coward to do what that motherfucking did. And his motherfuckers just keep coming out to this day talking about what kind of a guy he was. He was a good guy. My son, my he also said that it was ironic that the ECW had been seen as a violent and dangerous business that promoted drug use, yet only one person had died during New Jack's five years with them. But WWE, on the other hand, were averaging around three deaths a year. New Jack also accused WWE chairman Vince McMahon of murder, saying that McMahon helped his wrestlers to falsify their drug tests. Also, fuck the WWE and fuck Vince McMahon, they're the reason that the Andre the Giant video get taken down. So, they can suck my dick. Years later, in 2013, New Jack decided to retire, but he very quickly became bored with just sitting around all day. All he knew was wrestling, so, he had to go back to that since even if he found other work, it would never pay as well. Everything went as expected. New Jack was wrestling again with no real incidents, at least for a couple of years. In 2015, New Jack was in trouble again in Florida, this time for interrupting a fight with the American Gangsters, which was a tag team made up of Eddie and Jay Brock from All Stars American Wrestling. They never performed in front of more than 100 people, and they were both described as being nerds. Wrestling for them was a lot more relaxed, and no one really got badly hurt. At least, when compared to any of New Jack's matches. These guys were pretty much amateurs. New Jack made a surprise entrance into the ring from the crowd, and he was offended by how soft the fight was. He also wanted to punish them for stealing the name Gangsters, which obviously was the name of his tag team with Mustafa. He started to brag on the microphone about his past incidents with Mass Transit and Vic Grimes, and he bragged about stabbing Hunter Red 15 times, even though before he said it was only 9. The tag team didn't really know how to respond to New Jack just appearing in the ring, though I imagine they were shitting their pants a little bit though. Especially when New Jack asked them if they wanted to join the big boys and he offered to fight them free of charge. And he wasn't joking. The fight was arranged for next week, and New Jack promised them that if they showed up, he was going to brutalise them. On the day of the fight, it looked like the American gangsters had made the smart choice to not show up, since an hour had passed and there was no sign of them. But then, they turned up and got into the ring with New Jack, who by this point was fucking furious. Not only through them disrespecting him by turning up late, but also for having turned up at all, since that meant that they thought they could take on New Jack. New Jack, as usual, had brought a weapon with him, which can only be described as something like a Wolverine claw. The fight had only just started and New Jack started to grab them by the throat and push the claw into their foreheads. Within minutes, there was blood all over the ring. Some of the wrestling moves that New Jack used against them were said to be intentionally designed to cause as much pain as possible. And it very quickly became clear that these guys were no match for New Jack. 
There are videos of this brutal fight around the internet, but for obvious reasons, I can't show any of it. New Jack, however, did change his tune after the fight, and he showed respect towards his opponents for going up against him. Afterwards, he spoke to the American gangsters personally to tell them that if they want to climb any higher in wrestling, the match they just had had to be the standard, and it's what they should expect in future. And he even had some photos taken with the guys while they were all busted up, which again, I can't show because they're, they're fucking covered in blood. Later, New Jack had to have surgery on his ankle, which kept him in a brace for over two years, and due to this injury, New Jack was forced back into retirement again. But this time, there was no choice for him. He literally couldn't wrestle. As we all know, wrestlers sustain many injuries over their careers, which end up plaguing them later in life. But despite New Jack's injuries taking a massive toll on his body, he had zero regrets for anything he did in the ring. New Jack had five children throughout his life, but very little is known about them. However, in 2020, one of his sons made himself known on Twitter because apparently three years previously, New Jack had disowned him. This was due to the fact that he became a drag queen named Washington Heights. New Jack had a lot of trouble accepting this and apparently called his son a bundle of sticks and told them that they are not related. Apparently New Jack also had an issue with this particular son being listed on his Wikipedia page, so his drag queen son ended up becoming an official editor of the page so they could just add themselves in anyway. But then, in 2016, while walking home, New Jack collapsed. He was diagnosed with blood clots in his legs, back and his lungs, most likely from all of the injuries he had sustained throughout his career. And he was also having troubles with his vision, and on top of this, he had a worsening heart problem. New Jack was regularly bedridden after he collapsed, and for years, he had been taking heart medication. This was due to an existing heart condition, and also because... New, New Jack was half cocaine. The, the man was half cocaine. That, over, you know, over enough years, that, that does things to your heart. So the damage to his heart was too much. New Jack died of a heart attack in his home city of Greensboro, North Carolina on the 14th of May, 2021, at the relatively young age of 58. New Jack lived a chaotic life with no self-preservation. He did whatever the hell he wanted to do while being completely full of cocaine. And if anyone stood in his way, he would teach them a brutal lesson that they would never forget, due to the scars he would leave them with. He did not have any limits when it came to what he would do in the ring, which resulted in him becoming known as one of the most violent and insane wrestlers ever. Wrestlers who have faced New Jack in the past still to this day say that they think he was trying to kill them. And, and, and to be honest... I think he was. It's Count Dankula on YouTube! Everybody subscribe!